The series begins with Carol, a woman who prefers a peaceful life and avoids socializing or being in crowded places. The world is recently in chaos when scientists announce that another planet is on a collision course to Earth, and humanity only has about one year left. Many people decided to live their last days to the fullest, doing whatever they like, traveling and finding love, and giving their life to Christ. But Carol on the other hand keeps doing her normal routine and doesn't allow the worldly activities to affect her. She pays a visit to her parents Pauline and Bernard, who are worried about her lack of happiness and adventures. They compare her with her sister Alina, who skydives and travels around the world. Carol had to lie to end the worries of their parents by saying she's also having fun and was even learning surfing at the beach yesterday. After doing a little shopping, her old friend Jeanette comes across her on the road and invites her to a party that is coming up this evening. Carol joins the party but wasn't comfortable by the too much people and too much noise. She goes away from the party to at least somewhere quiet, and it's there she meets a man called Eric. Eric is an introvert like Carol, who also left the party calling it crazy. There are a lot of things Carol and Eric begin to found in common. What she enjoys is also what Eric enjoys. They both kissed and slept together at Eric's house. The next morning, Eric prepares breakfast for Carol, who notices through the picture on his wall that his wife divorced him. Carol rejects the food and goes away. Later that evening, Eric is so happy to find Carol on the road. He forgot to collect her number and was afraid if he will never see her again. He invites her to dinner but Carol is kinda resistant, but agrees to show up when he promises she would like it. He prepares his favorite dish which she enjoys and takes her to his favorite spot in the city where they can see another planet like the moon heading towards Earth. At this spot, Eric confesses the love he has for Carol. That's too quick right, because they just knew each other for a day. Eric tells her that after his wife left him, he thought he will never find anyone again, but that's when he saw Carol like a miracle from God. Even though he begs on his knees, Carol makes it clear that she doesn't feel the same way and leaves him in his knees crying. Carol goes to hide in her parents' house for a while, but notices they are about to travel. Her mom believing Carol is now having fun in her life, can now freely do same too with her husband. They are going on a cruise which will take them to all part of the world. They gift her with a surfing board before they leave and she tears up. Her parents still think she is having fun surfing on the beach, but lying to them that she is having fun was for the best, so they won't worry about her any longer. She falls asleep in her car and dreams about the things that could go wrong if she decides to have fun. A soldier wakes her up and orders her to move because she's in a no parking area. She realizes her car battery has run down and had no choice but to leave the car. While sitting at a railway station, Carol notices a woman on a suit and follows her. She keeps following the woman until they get to an office building where she sees hundreds of people who are working hard in a finance department. Episode 2 begins with Eric who drinks and cry and causes love after Carol left him. He throws his wedding ring into a river. Meanwhile, Carol is amazed by the accounting office she comes across. The boss of the accounting department invites her inside his office and she ends up being hired as an admin assistant. Even though Carol tries to question them or try to find out what is going on, she doesn't get the answer she needs. Carol works very hard, working at night sometimes. She gets herself a blue suit and of course, she is now really enjoying her new routine. After a month spent working at the accounting office, we find out that the world will end in 6 months and 25 days. Just as she goes to work as normal, she makes copies when the printing machine breaks down. Carol decides to go and get Tunner to fix the machine and questions her fellow workers if she should get something for them, but she gets no response. Carol looked for the toner in all supermarkets in the area but couldn't find any. Jeanette contacts her and invites her to a Buddhist housewarming party. Back at home, she sees pictures of more of her relatives traveling. She scrolls through her school yearbook and sees no autograph. Her sister's corner of the room is full of pictures. The next morning, Carol realizes she overslept and rushes to the office. Hundreds of papers on her desk to be printed, but the printing machine is still broken. She gets a call about her performance review. Carol notices two threatening men watching her at a corner of the office, and he opens her drawer just to find a gun there. Later that evening, Carol goes from one mall to the other, but she couldn't still find a toner to fix the copy machine. Carol is frustrated, and the worst part is that no one at the office refuses to talk to her. To catch a break from all this, she decides to attend the Buddhist party Jeanette invited her to. They have dinner where Jeanette announces that Carol will be going to China. Everyone compliments her for living her life well, but Carol excuses herself to the restroom after feeling overwhelmed. While exploring around the mansion, Carol sees a printer with a toner has been looking for. She takes the toner but Jeanette couldn't let her take what doesn't belong to her. Carol had no other choice but to bring out a gun she received at work. Jeanette is so afraid and Carol uses the gun to threaten everyone as she makes her way out of the mansion. 
Outside, Carol is met by Eric's son Stephen, who begs her to come see his dad who is dying from heartbreak. Carol also points the gun at him and threatens him to head back home. Just as she resumes her work, she is shocked to find the printing machine working perfectly well with a new toner inside it. She begins her work and stores the spare toner in her drawer. She performs so well that she gets promoted to an administrative assistant. While she leaves work, she comes across a woman and thanks her. Carol knows it was the woman who helped her fix the printer. The woman who introduces herself as Donna shows her a room where a lot of toner are stored in case the one in her machine spoils. The next morning, Carol goes to the kitchen to bake banana bread for her co-workers. She hopes to impress Donna, the cool girl at work with her bakery skills. Just as the time for work ticks, she prepares herself to leave along with Donna and a bald man in different location. Donna gives the man a ride to work while Carol rides alone. At work, Carol fantasizes herself bonding with Donna over the banana bread. She daydreams laughing and talking with Donna as if they are best friends. But in reality, Donna doesn't even respond to Carol-friendly greetings. Carol kept on staring at Donna a couple of times which Donna notices. Later that day, Donna asks to see her in a room and warns Carol to stop staring at her. She brings out the banana bread she baked this morning saying she just wanted to thank her for helping her fix the printer. Donna is relieved she's not a psycho but still threatens to throw a stapler at her face if she stares at her again. On the other hand, we see Carol's parents and their doctor, Michael, having the fun of their lives on a cruise ship. They eat at its restaurant where the captain greets them warmly. He repeats the same greetings to costumers again and again. He looks so bored and tired. We find out that this man has been a captain for about 30 years but wants to do something different. The office is visited by two men from the management. They need volunteers to work at night. Donna finally tries Carol's banana bread and it tastes really good. Concerning Carol's questions about the office, Donna explains that they are doing some kind of audit but she doesn't know what. Anyway, they work all night and any time they catch a break, they eat banana bread and chat about their selves and families together. Donna admits her family thinks she's writing a novel. Carol admits she lied to hers about surfing. After a while, that bald man goes inside the break room to have some coffee. He and Donna hasn't done any former introduction ever since she's starting picking him from his house with her car and introduces himself as Louis. He tells them he knows a reason why all these people are here. He says they all died and the office is purgatory. He says the office is a test to their souls making Carol and Donna to laugh really hard, but it doesn't seem Lewis is joking at all. Back at the cruise ship, the captain goes out to smoke where he meets Michael catching some air. Michael states how happy he is, leading to the captain question to know the relationship he has with Carol both parents, Bernard and Pauline. He says he is their doctor but that's not all. He is in a threesome kind of relationship with them. He tells stories and talks about the loves he has for his two partners and how happy they make him. Those two men from the management show up again and announces it's time for office stretching because it keeps proper blood flow on the muscles since they work non-stop. Meanwhile, Louis argues the office is a work of performance art, but Donna insists it is just work. Each of them keeps sleeping off all they work. Louis then takes the other two to another part of the building, a tanning salon. Unfortunately, Carol and Don don't think it's quite as fun as he does. Louis becomes disappointed and the other two decide to apologize and pretend to be interested in his idea of fun. They get inside the tanning beds and chat about life. Carol says she misses Applebee's. Louis talks about how he dropped out of school and backpacked through America. He says it was a great experience but also feels like a blur sometimes. An alarm rings and Carol and Louis get out of the tanning beds. When Donna arises from her bed, she begins to cry. She joined this work because she thought it will make her feel special but she feels she's just wasting her life on a work that has no meaning. Carol also confesses that she came to this work because she doesn't know what she wants. They decided to head back to the office. On the other hand, the captain packs his luggages especially pictures of different countries. He rides on a boat to go on an adventure to find happiness, abandoning his cruise ship. Michael observes him leave through a window and smiles. Carol says goodbye to her new friends as they close from work and are to resume on Monday. Lewis and Donna move together since they live in the same building. The next episode begins showing us the months Earth has before its destruction. Carol decided to go on a trip to see her sister. She learns French on a language course so she can talk and understand her sister whose speech is French. She uses a map to get to a certain location where she is met by her sister Alina, who shows up with a parachute. At Carol's home, Alina begins filming everything Carol does and everything of their activities with her video camera. She documents her visit to Carol's house and recorded a message to send to their parents. Elena takes Carol on an adventure in the Hidden Falls in Sabino Canyon Forest and begins to interview Carol while she videos her.
She questions Carol about their childhood and college days. Alana is trying ways to bond with Carol, but Carol, on the other hand, isn't comfortable with Alana filming everything they do. Alana explains that it's a way of showing her life to the world. While they go to bed, Alina asks Carol why she lied to their parents about her surfing at the beach. Carol replies that she doesn't want them to worry, but when Alina tries to ask more questions, Carol shuts her down. The next day, Alina videos their breakfast and Carol's hatred towards birds. They still have a lot of miles to trek before reaching their final destination, the waterfalls. Alina keeps bombarding Carol with more questions like, don't you think it's weird that they are all going to die soon? But Carol gives reluctant response. They talk about their first lovers, the things they regret in life, and what Carol will do on their last day on Earth. Carol gets fed up with the camera on her face all the time, but her sister says it's a way of bonding with her. What frustrated Carol the more is when Alina admits they are lost in the forest. They light a fire and to Carol's annoyance, Alina won't stop filming. Alina also get angry and opens up that the only reason she took her into the forest is because she wants to get close to her. She claims her reasons for interviewing Carol is because Carol doesn't talk and doesn't say a word unless she is asked a question. Alina continues by saying they are going to die in six months' time and she doesn't even know who Carol is. Even though they are related, it's as if they are not even sisters but strangers. The next morning, it turns out that the sisters have found their way to the waterfalls. Carol and Alana reconciles after their quarrel last night. They finally reach the waterfall which turned out to be dry, but they still appreciate its beauty. Carol is about to say something important, but the video cuts. Later we see Carol screaming into the void. To make Alana to know her, she tells Alana that she works at an accounting office. Although Carol doesn't know what the office is doing there, but reveals that it makes her happy. Elena hugs Carol, professing her love, excited that Carol has finally opened up to her. This episode ends with Carol riding Elena back home. After a few days, Elena is seen sleeping at her home on the couch with her husband. She ejects the tape and changes it from Spain to Carol. The next episode begins with Carol who complains to her friends that they hardly know a single thing about their fellow workers. Not even their names. Donna tells her that people here aren't here to socialize but just here to work, but Carol wishes she just knew who everyone was. Carol begins to check all her co-workers' personal files to know their names. She begins to address each of them by their names leaving them shocked. A man called David at her workplace is shown to be working day and night nonstop. One night, he slumps over his keyboard lifeless. Carol notices him and tries to wake him up, but realizes he's already dead. She gets so scared and contacts Donna and Louis for assistance. They carry him and puts him in Donna's car boot and drive to his house address thanks to his ID. They knock on the door and David's wife welcome them. She shouts David's name to come attend to his visitors. Does that mean she doesn't know where her husband is? His wife assumes he's upstairs even though she has never seen him in a month now. It's obvious that none of them in the house seem to care about David. Carol feels uncomfortable with this and signals them to leave. At the car, she suggests they need to search for someone who cares about David. They go through his phone and they see his uncle as emergency contact, so they make a decision to give him a try the next day. The next day, Carol is happy to see her fellow workers addressing each other by their names. After work, they arrive at David's uncle's house, but to their disappointment, his uncle recently died and there is a funeral being held beside his house. They head back and gave David's dead body to the authorities. They gave Carol David's belongings and Carol suddenly gets an idea. She goes to the office and gets everyone's attention by calling their names and announces David's passing to them. She makes a wonderful speech and invites them to a memorial on the roof, but none of them seem to care. Only Donna and Louise attends the memorial and they all begin to say the little thing they know about David. To Carol's surprise, some of the workers who were touched by her speech started joining the memorial and also say the good things they know about David. Carol releases his ashes to the wind and says goodbye to her fellow workers by name. A worker called Bruce introduces himself to Carol for the first time and that was how the episode ended. I will stop here for now guys, but if you want me to continue with a recap of this show please let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe. See you in our next video.